Christian Fetham is a much-loved family man who had a rough start in life and came out of jail a changed person. But the government says it's too late for the New Zealand-born father. He's failed the character test and has to go. Do you understand what's happening with your dad? No. You don't? You just know he's not here? Mm-hmm. A daughter without her dad. Do you know why he's not here? Because he's in the detention centre. He's in the detention centre. It's your little girl. Yeah, she's gorgeous, isn't she? Yeah, she's a beautiful kid. Does she keep you going? Only just. A mother without her son. I just can't tell you what it's doing to me. It's just destroying us all. Sisters without their brother. We're speechless. We really are. He needs to come home. He needs to come home. Sincerely, thank you for being here, free Christian. And a loving partner without her man. It was just such a shock that day when I got that phone call from Christian and he said that he's not coming home. He's, he's been picked up by Border Force and police. He could be on the farm. Six months ago, Christian Feetham was a hard-working farmer. Today, he's a detainee in a federal government detention centre, about to be kicked out of the country because the Immigration Department says he doesn't meet the character test. Christian, how would you describe the situation you're in? It's terrible. It's, you just don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. Um, you don't know where your life is at. Christian was born in New Zealand. He was just 13 months old when his parents moved to Australia. On that basis, his card is marked. And 43 years after arriving here as a baby, next stop, NZ. Christian's town, Apollo Bay on Victoria's surf coast, backs him 100%. From detention, he watches on as speaker after speaker sing his praises, even local police. But the federal government is unmoved. You got into trouble as a young fella. How old were you? Um, I was a ward of the state from uh, the ages of 10 to 13, and it's probably continued on since then. Why were you a ward of the state? Uh, there was lots of uh, mental abuse from my father, and so we used to clash all the time. Um, and that put me into becoming a ward of the state. Detained in the government system, the Beltara Boys Home, Christian met bad company. It's just a country kid at heart, you know, and then I learned all the ropes of street life. Bad habits flowed into adult life, and Christian admits he's embarrassed by assault and driving convictions and jail time. He says it was the lesson he needed, and now he's a totally different person. His town agrees. Well, I'd served my time in prison. You know, some people say I'm a prison success story. And now, at the swipe of a pen by Home Affairs, I'm in a place which is worse than prison. And my whole life has got a major question mark on it. It's four years now since Christian walked out of jail and back onto the family farm. Four years of hard work with the sheep. Four years of community involvement. And four years as a free man in the eyes of the law. Finally, his troubles behind him. It was April 27th this year, and life was pretty normal for Christian. And it doesn't get much more normal than operating a farm like this around here. But Christian was in for a big shock that day. He got a visit from the Australian Border Force. He thought he was in trouble for using a drone on his farm to check on his sheep. But it was a lot more official and a lot more sinister. Than that. They've looked at a criminal history over 12 months, check. They've looked at the fact that he's not born in Australia, check. And that's been enough for them to go, right, this guy's now on our radar, we, we need to pick him up. Christian Prudence Gregson is Christian's partner. I don't know, it's just, a, it's ludicrous. The whole, the whole situation, the whole... So, so what is he, a Kiwi or an Australian? He's Australian. And, case and trust me, says Prudence, if he wasn't of good character, why? she wouldn't be with why? him. Totally, Christian is a reformed man, absolutely. A good man. He's a bloody good man, yeah. The family farm is now run by Christian's mother, Barbara. I just find it so hard. I don't have modern machinery, and I'm walking these hills that are so steep, and I just, I can't believe I'm in this predicament. A mother knows her son, and Barbara has no doubt that Christian is a new man. I'm so proud, and I love you very much. I do. 
I just need you at home, Christian. What did you say to your dad when you went to the detention centre? I miss you. And what did your daddy say? I miss you too. He's always worked, he's always paid his taxes. He's yeah. never been he's a drain on the welfare system of Australia. No. Well, now your taxes are paying for him. Yeah, that's right. In detention. Right. It's yes. wrong. 180 days. Detaining Christian is costing taxpayers $459 a day. So far, almost $90,000. But Julian Burnside QC, a human rights and refugee advocate, says there's a far greater cost, devastating families. The legislation that allows families to be broken up so that a person can be removed from the country is unbelievably cruel. It is not what Australia should be doing. Under Section 501 of the Immigration Act, so far this year, more than 100 people have been deported to New Zealand alone for having a criminal history. Christian falls under the current legislation. If you've been jailed for more than 12 months, you face deportation. Now, under even tougher legislation, even if you haven't been jailed, you can be deported. The only ties I've got to New Zealand is my birth extract. I'm being born there. That's my only ties to New Zealand. I've got no family there. Stop and notice that he's a human being and ask how you would feel if this was done to you or your family. We it's need our brother fair. home. It's not fair. We grew up here together, man. Him and run around the paddocks on the horses and everything. Like, he just needs to be here. When you've spent your, virtually your whole life in this country, you're entitled to be treated as though you belong to this country. Australians who are born here and are citizens of Australia commit much worse offences and they cannot be removed, they cannot be deported. They're treated because they belong here. I would say I didn't pass the character test numerous years ago, but there's, you know, people can change their way of life. This legislation was designed for murderers, pedophiles, yeah. people that are hurting other people and doing bad, bad things. Bad things. People like this, though, Kapini Tiamo, a member of the mongrel mob Bikey Club. He was deported to Auckland last week. He moved to Victoria from New Zealand when he was 30. Here, he racked up convictions for kidnapping, false imprisonment and assault. Melbourne Magistrates Court was told he threatened to cut a man's head off with a running saw. What about the people you assaulted? What would they say about this? I'd say some of them would say, get on your bike and ride. I think some of them would also say, no, that is unfair. Beautiful day it's been. Too good to be stuck inside these bloody fences. This is Christian's second detention centre, Broadmeadows in Melbourne. He gives us a, a tour. Bag of toast. Cold toast. Nice. Here I am, walking around a small quadrangle. Ironically, the sheep Christian should be farming are New Zealand Perindales. But for the past six months, that's Mum's job. I'm praying I, he doesn't go. Please, I'm pleading that he doesn't go. What would you say to River now? Daddy O loves her very, very much. He loves his little wiglet. Did you give him a hug? Mm-hmm. And a kiss? Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty sad leaving, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The Department of Home Affairs stands by its decision to deport Christian and has rejected his application for citizenship by dissent. Christian's now relying on appealing that decision, which might not happen until September next year. The statement is on our homepage.